subnetting video 12. Welcome. This is on reserved addresses. If you're following me for the NTech 103 class, you'll be pleased to know that this is the last video for week two. Yes, it's been a lot of videos. Don't worry, that will slow down as we get into the practice phases uh, where we'll be doing a lot of practicing in the, cl in the classroom. So uh, I apologize it's been so many, but I try to keep them fairly short, and that way they're little bite-sized chunks. But let's look at reserved addresses. What do we mean by that? Well, there are several addresses that we have reserved uh, for special purposes that we cannot use on the Internet, on the public network system. There's a reason, that, and there are several reasons that we have these reserved, but one of them is a very uh, important special reason, and that is simply for private addresses because we have run out of address spaces. Let's uh, again liken this to a telephone system. We each have a, a telephone number that must be unique on the global telephone system, but there's nothing to say that I can't use internally as long as I don't go outside. I could use any number I want on my telephone system. And you can use the same numbers on your telephone system as long as they're staying local and don't go outside the confines of your organization. Why not use them? Well, that's exactly what we do. We set aside some addresses and say, well, let's use these privately. And then we have something called NAT or Network Address Translation right here. Network Address Translation Protocol, which runs usually on a router or a server and can translate uh, from an internal private address to an external, a single external address. Let's see what that looks like here. I've got five computers on a network here. 192.168.1.1, 1 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. Five different computers. I also have an address on the inside of this router. We haven't really talked about that, but every port on a router also has to have an address that's on that same network. So I have an address there. But as traffic, they say I have traffic passing from 192.168.1.2. Uh, it wants a, a web page from weather.com. So it goes out here to the switch, to the router, and, and says, I want weather.com. Well, NAT in this router translates that to a public address. These are private addresses. It translates it to a single public address. Now, it, it keeps track of who wanted it. 1.2 is the one that asked for this particular page. It keeps track of it, and it sends it out on the public network address, gets the page, comes back, and, and looks it up and says, oh, yeah, it was 1.2 that wanted that page, and sends it back out to 1.2. Well, these same addresses here, this 192.168.something something, can be used by any number of organizations as long as NAT is there to translate it to its single IP address here. And that's how this NAT thing works. So what are those addresses? Well, there are three groups of private addresses. Anything starting with 10. 10 dot anything is a class A, and re you'll recognize it. It's, that's somewhere between 0 and 120, uh, 127, right? So that's class A. Uh, so uh, you have a whole bunch of addresses here that you can use. If it starts with a 10, it is a private address, and you cannot use a 10 dot anything out on the Internet. A 172 dot eh, anything from 16 to 31 cannot be used. That's a class B. Why they did this, I'm not quite sure. But it's only between 172.16 and 172.31 are private addresses. And then if you have a smaller network, maybe a 192.168.anything is a class C uh, private address space. So these three, are, these three groups of addresses are reserved for private addresses. Now there are a few others as well. Other reserved addresses, 127 dot anything cannot be used on the internet. Routers will drop it like a hot potato because 127 is reserved to test your network card. And if I send something to 127, uh, it comes back. Uh, my card sends it back. It never goes anywhere. It never even goes out on the network at all. 
it just tests it's built into my uh, network cards to recognize it and to report back so I cannot use anything starting with 127 it's called a loop back address I cannot use 169.254 anything and that's because these are used to assign a, a kind of a dummy address when the computer doesn't get an IP address let's say that it can't talk to your router and so your router cannot assign it an IP address that's a service we call DHCP or dynamic host control protocol and if it cannot contact a DHCP server either on the router or on a server there's nobody there to give it an address it doesn't know what its address is so it will assign itself something in the 169254 range in the hopes that at least it can talk locally to anybody else that has an address in that range 224 anything this is a class D address and remember in these class D addresses here uh, the those are multicast addresses so we can't use them for unicast or one-to-one -one traffic this is a one-to-many traffic uh, so that I can send out to anybody that's subscribed to my to hear my multicast address can hear it so that's only on a local network it cannot go out on the internet and finally we don't use anything uh, above that so the rest of uh, class D and through class E we simply don't use and those are reserved for testing purposes so these are all reserved addresses you cannot use these on the internet all right that's all there is to it for now and um, we'll have another series of these we'll continue them with uh, with I believe it's number 13 next uh, later on probably next weekend and uh, so I hope you enjoy your week and if you're uh, just out on the internet listening to these then uh, you won't notice the pause but uh, we'll continue these and put on another set in about a week thank you